So I will have this slider crank mechanism. Okay, I made it this way, this shape, just in order to have the angles between zero and ninety degree. But it doesn't matter the way you you have the positions. Uh, it will be solved exactly in the same way. So here, uh, as we have already done uh, last uh, Monday, I will define the loop closure equation using the position of C relatively to A. So uh, in the first path, I will go uh, through AB. And uh, then from B, I will go uh, to C. This is um, first definition of the position of C. Then I can go, uh, I, as I have discussed it last time, I need to define, uh, to go always to the position of the slider uh, parallel to the direction of parallel to the direction of uh, the translation. So here also I will just add a point D here. Okay, this is point D. And I can define the position of C going through D. So I can define it, uh, okay. Okay, I will change the color maybe, okay. So I will have uh, AD and, okay. Okay, this is it. Now, uh, I will write it as previously. I will try, uh, okay, let's run this one. So here, okay, now we are independent. So it will be AB plus BC equal AD plus DC, except that now the vector AB will be the input, okay? So I will have AB the input plus BC the vector of link 3 equal AD this will be uh, the vector position of the slider and be unknown. BC it is this is uh, the shift between A and uh, the, the ground here the position of the ground. So this is constant, it will be always the same. So uh, the angle will be always vertical. So this is the ground. So it will be no. So now we are, we are going to start from this equation. We are going to start from this equation and we are going to, to, to solve uh, the problem. Now, before that, I need to insist a little bit uh, for these uh, two and before going away on the meaning of this one. And now, what we have said is AB is the vector position of which link? Of link two. So I will write it here. It is the vector position of Link to. I will now try to make it to link each one. Okay, uh, okay, I will take it here. This is AB is the vector position of link two. It is related of link two. Uh, BC. Okay, I will copy them, then I will uh, change them. So, BC is the vector position of link 3, but it is unknown as 
I don't know the angle for the vector BC. AD is the vector position of the slider. It is also unknown why, because I don't know the magnitude AD, and it is of the slider, so it will be R4. The vector DC, it is, no, uh, this one, I should have changed it. AD is the one of the slider. Unknown ADC is known because it is the one of the slider. So it is it looks like this one. And DC is constant. The magnitude is constant. The direction is constant. It is always vertical. It is the ground. So this is the loop closure equation I need. So this is the loop closure equation. One loop closure equation. Uh, if you choose to define the position, for example, of point B relatively to A, you will have a different one. A different loop closure equation it will look uh, different but they are all equivalent okay now choosing uh, this type of loop closure equation now the first thing and before any solving I need to check the angles if their definition is fine or not what we have said for the angles I need to define them along starting from i the horizontal direction here and at the origin of the vector so this is fine okay i prepared it this is fine the angle of the angle of the bar ab i, I have said it is the input so i will consider it as known given what is the value we, we will see this later okay it depends okay how you will choose it okay i will remove uh, this one no outline okay now the angle of theta 3 it's again it is defined relatively to the vector i of the basis the horizontal direction to the right fine here and also we have defined it at the origin of the vector bc at the origin of the vector i3 so it's fine too so this definition is fine, except here that this angle is variable, it will change. If the slider moves, for example, to the right, this angle will, will go down. If a uh, slider goes to the left, this, this angle will increase. So this theta 3 is, is variable. Okay, so I will take, take it variable. Now, the vector DC is always in the vertical direction okay so this is the angle theta 1 it is given and it is always 90 degree a vector uh, ad the one of the ground it is always and this is our choice to make it always in the same direction as the translation of the ground. So this is theta 4, and it will be always 0 degree. Now, let's see the magnitude of the magnitude of the vectors. The vector R2, its magnitude is the distance AB. The distance AB corresponds to the length of the bar AB. And we have said that links are rigid bodies, so this will not change. It is constant. If it is constant, I can know it before any, to start any, any analysis, any position analysis, so it will be given. It's known. Again, for the bar BC, it's a bar, it's a rigid body. The distance will not change. It's known. For the distance DC, again, this is, D is a fixed point. This height of the ground, it will be always the same. So this distance DC corresponds how much the, this second part of the ground is, uh, is, uh, is up relatively to the level of A. So this distance, also it's constant it will not change 
Why? Because when the slider moves, this vector will have always the same direction, the same magnitude. It's the same. So if the slider goes right, it's always the same vector. So the distance R1, it will be the same. Now, however, R4, now it will change. R4 is the distance AD. Now, if the slider moves right, it will increase. If the slider moves left, it will decrease. So R4, it is, it is unknown. Now we see here, and this is what we have calculated and what is expected, that we have only two unknowns. The two unknowns are the magnitude of vector R4 and the angle of vector theta 3. Yes. So let's move uh, to some vector calculation. So now it will be some vector calculation, uh, but we need to follow a little bit. Now, uh, I don't need any more this schematic. So this schematic is so important to make the analysis and to bring uh, the equations until now the loop closure equation. But after that, now I, even I can ignore, I can forget about my mechanism and I focus now on this equation. Now we have this loop closure equation. How I will solve it? Now to solve it, I need to write it on uh, a long x and a long y. Okay? So I will rewrite this equation twice. Okay, maybe I need to ignore this one. I will make uh, another equation. And I will have to make it uh, in two equations one a long x and one a long y. So First, I will split it along x, the horizontal direction, and then I will write the equation along y. Now, what I will have for the first part, if I write this equation along x, what I will have? If I will write this vector equation, Now, this loop closure equation, but I want to write it only considering the x coordinates. So the vector r2, let's see here. What will be the r2 here? The x coordinate, the coordinate of r2. It will be this one. Yes or no? I will make the projection. So I will have, okay, uh, maybe to make it tiny like this one. So the x coordinate of R2, I can split it on this one. Okay, R2 along x, for example. I will make it uh, R2 along X, and I will have R2 along Y. Yes or no? I will have. Okay, it's in red, it's not, but it should be in green, it's green, but okay, just to differentiate, I make. So I will have R2X. And I will have and I will have R2 Y. And I should do this one for each vector for R3, for R4, for R1, for all of this. What is R2 X? It's equal to what? I will use always R cosine for X and R sine for Y. Okay, 
why I am doing this and why it is correct because our choice of the angle this is why I have insisted on the angle now if you make your own choice of angle you need to be careful and study each case one by one if the vector along x is a cosine or sine, if it is plus cosine or minus cosine, uh, and so on and so on. Now, because I have made the choice of the angle starting from the vector basis i, and because I have chosen the angle as the origin of the vector, I can choose blindly, and it, it's correct, that always along x it will be cosines 100 percent i don't even need to check so here along x i will have always r to cosine theta 2 the first angle plus what I will have R3 it will be 100% cosine so I will copy then I will correct so I will have second vector R3 I don't need to check it's cosine theta 3 equal R4 this is only possible if you be very careful to the definition of angles if you make a uh, you, cho you choose the angles different than the way I have uh, presented, your result may be wrong. So here, R1 cosine theta 1. And I'm sure 100%. This is, I insist, multiple times, this is only possible because our choice of angle. Now, I will... Uh, make the useful color because I like them. It's it's very uh, make uh, clear what we are searching for. So everything regarding uh, the link two is known. It is the input for the bar R three. The magnitude is known. Uh, R four no. It's the angle, the direction, which is zero. For R one, it is the ground. So everything is known. Okay, and uh, what I don't know is the angle of the bar 3 and uh, the magnitude of the bar uh, or uh, the, the distance, uh, how, how far uh, the slider has moved, R4. So this is our first equation, one equation and two unknowns. If I will go to the y direction, I will do the same, except that I will take blindly sign again. I will insist 1,000 times that because of our choice of angle. So it will be everywhere sign. And here it will be everywhere sign. And again. sign now starting from this loop closure equation one vector equation I have succeeded to bring two scalar algebraic equation two equation two unknowns okay and I can solve to solve it here we need to use a little bit some uh, trigonometry equation not it's not difficult at all we will see it's, it's quite simple and straightforward what I will suggest here we can uh, do this one is to consider the angles that we know here first that theta 4 equals 0 and uh, that theta 1 is 90 degree so if I, I will substitute okay uh, let's take me this one in order to have a line. So I know that theta 4 equals 0 and theta 1 equals 90 degree. So when I will substitute here in the equation just to simplify first, what I will have 
theta for zero. So cosine zero is one. So uh, okay, so it's one. So I will have simply R four. R four times one, it will be R four. And sine theta four, uh, sine zero is zero. So all of this part will will be it will be R zero time. Uh, it will be R four times zero. So it will be zero. Again, theta one is ninety degree. Cosine ninety degree zero. So this part will cancel. And sine 90 degree is 1, so uh, R1 times 1 is R1. So we will have, it's even much uh, more simpler. And we have simplified the equation. Now, uh, if you see with this simplification, the solution is quite straightforward. Here, it's easy to solve it. Uh, I can use the second equation. I can start with the second equation. And with the second equation, I can use and find uh, okay, uh, the sign. Uh, okay, uh, yes, I will make it uh, here. So first, what I will do is to bring R2. I will make a fraction first. Okay, uh, here. So I will have R1. The original one. Then I will uh, bring this term to the right, so it will be minus. And I then divide by R3. Okay. So I have one. Uh, uh, okay, equal more. So the solution will be this one. This is the first step. And once I have this one, I can just substitute inside. Now uh, inside I will have okay, uh, maybe to take the sine minus one or the uh, arc sine. So here to to get theta three, I will make uh, arc sign of this uh, fraction and it will be uh, okay I don't need this sign so the angle theta 3 will be arc sign uh, okay yes so theta 3 will be this one okay it's simply r4 is already equal to all of this I need just to substitute uh, the value of theta 3 in, in, uh, in the first equation, that's all. So I will substitute this value. So in front of cosine, I will make uh, brackets and I will uh, substitute the value of theta 3. Okay, maybe if you, if you like, I can bring uh, R4 here from the other side and it will be equal to this one and the position problem now here it's okay sometimes okay yes uh, okay I'll just check it okay it's much better like this one so now the position problem is solved. It's done. We are finished. Okay. This is uh, okay. I will prefer to keep only green for the variables. This is it. Now we have the solution. And now try to analyze the velocity. Now, we will work with the velocity of a slider crank mechanism. So, and let me uh, remember you, this is what we have obtained. This is what we have so solved. Okay, this second slide is just 
little bit more general, but we came up this morning by this solution for the position problem. So even the intermediate steps, okay, uh, I don't need them, uh, all of this, what I need. Okay, uh, we'll discuss this later. So this is what we have done this morning. We have, uh, this is the solution of the position problem. Now I want velocity. So what I want is V4, the velocity of the slider. And what I want is omega 3, okay? Theta 1 is known, uh, okay, I will make them here. Theta 1 is known, it's 90 degree. We have said that Theta 4 is known and it is, uh, Theta 4 is zero, 0 degree. We have said that uh, theta 3 is already here, it's, it's solved just here, okay? So, now, in the beginning, theta 2 is the input, so theta 2 is known. And also, as I have already solved the position problem, now, Now also theta 3 is, is in green, it is solved. Now here I can switch. R4 and theta 3, now for this velocity problem, they are in green, they are solved. I know how to calculate the right side, so I know R4. Okay, even I don't need to solve uh, this one, okay. Okay, so I know theta 3 and Okay, uh, theta 4 is also known. Now all R1, R2 also, uh, okay, I will have. All R2, R3, R1, and uh, R4. They are all known, so they are all in green now. So R1, R3, and R4, okay? They are in green. Now, theta1 is constant, so when I differentiate something constant, it will be zero. So omega 1 is 0. Theta 4 also it is constant, it's always 0. When I will differentiate it, omega 4 will be 0. Now, what I will assume, because I have always one input, okay, so the input here will be omega 2, this is given. This is mobility one, so I can control one motion. So when I can control the motion of link two, I can uh, assign an angle, I can assign a velocity, I can assign acceleration. So omega two is given. Now also, you have R1, R2, and R3 are all constants. So if I will differentiate them, there will be I differentiate something constant, it will be zero. Now, except here, for theta three, when I, it is variable. Now, theta three itself, now I have solved the position problem, it is known, but its velocity, I don't know it. So I need to find omega three. And also, I need to find R4 itself is known, but its differentiation with respect of time, okay, let's say V4, it's, it's unknown. 
And what are these? Okay, let's say to define. Actually, omega 2 is the differentiation of theta 2 with respect of time. So when I differentiate with respect of time, I will uh, put just a dot on, on top. Theta dot 2 is the first derivative with respect of time of theta. When it is double differentiation, it will be double dot. So omega 2 is, is theta dot 2. Now again, for omega 3, And for this one, it will be R4. Okay, so this one, it will be R dot 4. And it is unknown. And here it will be theta dot 3. And also here it is unknown. So the velocity problem will have the same dimension. If the position problem have two dimension, so we have we need to write two equation here. We need to write two equations. Now to find omega three, the, the the velocity problem, I need to find omega three to solve for omega three and to solve for v four, which is r dot four. Now, for this one, I have two ways. Either, okay, I have this expression of, for example, theta 3. So, I take this expression and I can differentiate it with respect of time. So, if I will differentiate it with respect of time, I can, uh, it's, uh, okay, I have direct expression of omega 3. But, okay, it's not easy. Uh, Okay, to differentiate r cosine, it's possible, but there is some formulas. We can we can do it. We can take the differentiation, see what is the derivative of r cosine. But here it's it's quite complex. We have r cosine, then here a fraction, and here then theta is inside the sine. Okay, so uh, it's not as easy and it's not systematic if the solution like for the four bar mechanism for the four bar mechanism the solution is quite complex and even we don't have a, an explicit expression of the angle theta 4 so in that case it's quite difficult to differentiate so what we will recommend here is that we go back to for example this Simplified equation. Okay, this one, the original one, we can go to the original one, but okay, uh, why not? But let's go to the little bit simplified considering theta 4 equals 0 and theta 190 degree. So I will go back to this equation. And instead of differentiating the complete solution at the end, which is a little bit hard mathematically, I will do something a little bit longer. I will restart from the equation, but solving it will be much easier. So I will restart from here, okay? And I will differentiate, I will differentiate the, 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 the two equations. Now, I insist something that Okay, when I will differentiate, when I, I will make just a, a comment here, when I have a function f, which is in terms of an angle, which is our case here, like, like sine theta or, or cosine theta, and I want to differentiate with respect of time. Actually, the theta, this one, it itself is depend. It's changing with time. It's variable. So it is theta of time. 
So when I will differentiate this one, okay, I will make it in different color because it's just a comment. Now when I will differentiate this one with respect of time, okay, so respect of time, it is dot or uh, explicitly uh, it is df over dt. Now what I will do first is I will differentiate what is inside, which is here. Uh, okay, uh, this one. I will take d theta with respect of time. Then I will multiply it by df over d theta. So what I will have at the end, if I use the dots as a symbol for differentiation with respect of time, I will have f dot, okay, uh, yes will be x to theta dot so here I will have theta and time is df over d theta so what I will do now theta dot is what is omega the angular velocity so here I will substitute this one uh, okay. Omega. So if I want to differentiate any function with respect of time, but the function is in terms of an angle, what I will do is to multiply with the angular velocity and then differentiate with respect of the angle. So this is what we will use here. So the first thing, no, uh, okay. So now here first, I have to differentiate R2. R2 is constant, so it is R2 cosine theta 2. So first I need to multiply by omega. So here it will be omega 2. So differentiation of uh, the function so first I will multiply by omega then I will differentiate the cosine with respect of theta differentiation of cosine it is minus sine so I will have minus here so it will be minus r2 omega 2 sine theta 2 then I will do the same here. So I will have R3. I need to multiply by omega 3 first. And then switch the cosine to minus to minus sine. And here the theta 3, okay, I already solved the position problem. It is in green, it is known. Differentiating R4, it's simply R4 dot or V4. For the second equation, okay, I will use the same thing. First, I will multiply by omega. And then I will differentiate sine. Sine differentiation of cosine is plus cosine okay again here it will be omega I will multiply by omega 3 and then differentiation of cosine of sine is cosine that's all and here the angle is known now, 
R1 is uh, the ground uh, link length. This is constant. If I will differentiate, it will be zero. So now I have obtained two new equations. Two in new equation, okay, which are in terms of omega three and in terms of r dot four. Here, the equation are linear because my variable here is omega three, and my variable here is r four dot or v four. Okay, I, I will use both notation. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay, uh, here. Yes. Okay, I will use it is the same V4. So here again, it is a two nonlinear equation. For the case of the slider crank, it's quite easy. The solution is even straightforward. Because here you can take the second equation. Okay, first. We can focus on the second equation. And with the second equation, I can have omega 3. So what I will have, OK, uh, here, uh, OK, I will uh, bring all of this. to the right, so it will be minus and I need to divide by R3 and cosine theta 3. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, okay, I will use this one. Sine theta 3. And then and the zero, I don't need it. And the cosine and here, even this one, I can. Okay, now I have solved it for omega 3. I have uh, the solution for omega 3. I know R2, omega 2, and theta 2, R3, and theta 3, so I can solve and calculate omega 3. Now, uh, the other one, you can later substitute now what you have obtained here, and we can have that V4 or or R dot four is equal to uh, all of this, but just substituting to omega three uh, uh, the fraction. And even we can simplify a little bit because here uh, R3 and R3 will cancel. Okay, I will make it into steps. Okay. Uh, okay, or even it's, it's, it's quite a few steps, so I will do it here. So R3 and R3 here will cancel. And uh, the minus with the minus also it will be plus. And what I will have is sine theta 3 divided by cosine theta 3. I can write it as, as tan. Okay, and I can remove this one. So I can remove the fraction and we'll have it. This one, okay. So now I have my complete solution for the velocity problem. Okay, let's assume, for example, that uh, we know uh, 
I will give you uh, the detail, all which is known. So as usual, what we know is is uh, the the magnitude or the length of bars. So the length of bars is is known. So we'll have here R two, for example. Uh, let's say uh, 50. Okay, it can be any unit of, of length. Let's make it 50 centimeter, for example. Uh, the second bar, uh, R3, uh, let's assume uh, it is 80 centimeter. And uh, R1, R1 is, uh, uh, it is the shift between uh, the, the translating ground of, uh, of the slider and this connection. So this is the vertical distance. R1 is this distance and it is constant. Let's assume that uh, this one, so the schematic is not of course at scale. So uh, I will have, for example, R1 equal 25 centimeter. Uh, so, what else I need? Uh, we need uh, theta 2. Theta 2. So, for example, I have, uh, okay, uh, this mechanism in front of me, a real, ex a real mechanism, and uh, I'm playing with the mechanism, and I will fix, for example, the angle here. Uh, I will move the bar uh, till a certain angle. Let's say that the angle uh, theta 2. Uh, will be uh, 70 degree, for example. Okay. Now, uh, I will ask you uh, to find what is R4 and what is theta 3. This is now the question, is to find R4 and theta 3 with Excel. So here just I take all parameters one by one, let's say R1. Uh, I should precise which unit here, centimeter, I will not uh, do it, and R3. And what I need is uh, theta uh, 2. Uh, this is it. This is all the inputs I need. Uh, now uh, here what I have 50, uh, 25 and 50, 80. So I will have here uh, 25, uh, 50, and 80, and we have said that theta 2 is uh, 70. Uh, okay, now uh, this is theta in, uh, in degree. Uh, I should make it in uh, radian. So this is in degree or uh, in radian uh, to calculate angles, so I will make it theta two in uh, radian because to calculate cosine and sine, the angle should be here. Okay, uh, for by default here, I can switch it, but I don't prefer. So here to switch to radian, I will make uh, times pi and uh, divided by 180 degree. Then uh, I need to calculate uh, theta three, uh, theta three, which will be uh, equ equal to a sine. So a sine for arc sine. And uh, what we will have is R1 minus R2 sine theta two. So uh, I will have R1, so the numerator, which is R1 minus uh, R2 times sine of uh, theta 2. Uh, you correct me if uh, I make a mistake. So this is and dividing by uh, R3, isn't it? So uh, this is it, and we will have the angle here. Uh, it will be first in radian uh, when I use it, and I need to convert it in uh, degree to C. So theta 3 in, in degree 
it will be okay this one time is uh, what time uh, 180 and divided by okay now I, I move to calculate uh, simply R4 so uh, uh, okay I already calculate theta 3 so just I will use uh, any one from here so R4 will be R2 cosine theta 2 plus R3 cosine theta 3 so I will use simply the one R4 uh, in centimeter uh, it will be equal to R2 times cosine uh, uh, theta 2 okay I'm using radian but okay you have your calculator so you so you manage it yourself time is uh, cosine uh, theta 3 I'm using radian this is it so we will have 94 uh, centimeter okay uh, 94 centimeter fine so this is it uh, perfect okay I don't prefer keeping a lot of uh, numbers here I will just keep only two significant uh, digits to calculate all the position so in, in this case we need a certain loop to to manage it so the the, the inputs the bar lengths the geometrical parameters will not change so I will take for example uh, some values okay here so r1 will be always 25 r2 will be 50 r3 will be always 80 centimeter this is the geometry of the mechanism this is uh, fix it uh, if i will change here it means i changed the mechanism no i'm using the same one now the input this is what you can play with if you are a user so here for example let's see what happens if I will uh, uh, make uh, multiple position of the input so theta 2 I will put it at 0 degree then uh, let's say at 10 degree uh, until uh, I, am, I will make one full rotation okay so until 360 uh, degree okay now here I, keep, I have one full rotation so here I should keep the same uh, numerical values for all uh, theta 2 in degree now in radian it will follow so I will calculate it and of course depending on the input angle now automatically I will have only one position I will not change so this is what means also mobility equal one so if I have I can define the, the value for one parameter the others are automatically calculated and define it so here for example we can uh, plot uh, let's say in in degree uh, what is the positions uh, okay what is how theta 3 changes so uh, I'm not good at Excel but okay I'm, I'm, I'm trying so let's see uh, this one so this is all position how for example theta 3 changes now for example if if theta 2 is at 0 in the horizontal position now uh, theta 3 will have uh, almost 20 degree 18 degree now here if I am uh, I put the input at theta 2 at uh, almost 200 degree now uh, theta 3 will be uh, almost 31 and uh, and so on so you see here for example that uh, theta 3 cannot go uh, and get uh, cannot make a full rotation why because there is a minimum value for theta 3 it is here uh, it's almost minus 18 and a maximum value uh, which is 70 so uh, theta 3 can go only for for this range between uh, minus 20 or minus 18 or minus 19 18 uh, 75 I think this is the minimum and the maximum the maximum is 70 so this what mean is that theta 3 the, the bar 3 is, is 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 only rocking it cannot go all these 
positions. Now let's also uh, see the position of uh, R4 in terms of the angle. Now here I cannot do the same animation uh, that I have showed in class for the previous lectures only in MATLAB I can do it. Now uh, here if I will uh, draw uh, the positions Now, uh, okay, here, this is it. So these are, for example, all the values are four in centimeters. So the minimum uh, value for R4 is 16.65, and the maximum value is, is here, it is 127. Let's see and calculate for velocity. Now here, as I have said, Okay, uh, we have all angles. Okay, uh, this one and uh, go ahead and calculate omega three and v four. Calculate the velocity of the slider and the angular velocity of theta three. And we have, okay, for R4, we have said it is uh, now 94 centimeter. Okay, uh, I will keep just large. And for theta 3, it is, uh, okay, I'm checking. For theta 3, we have obtained how much? It was uh, 470, okay. The angle is uh, 70 degree. Now, this is this is our example 70 degree so the angle is uh, minus 15.95 okay so the angle is minus 15.95 uh, in terms of degree and this is 94.02 uh, centimeter so here now you go and calculate uh, omega 3 and uh, v4 okay so we need now omega 3 and v4 Uh, omega 2 as as input so here I have uh, chosen how much 12 uh, is it 12 oh, I forgot yes 12 uh, yes 12 so it will be 12 uh, for every uh, angles it's the same now uh, later uh, I'm uh, going to calculate first omega 3 it will be also in radian per second so it will be minus r2 omega 2 cosine theta 2 and divided by r3 cosine theta 3 so i will have omega uh, 3 in radian per second and uh, also it will be uh, it's minus and it will be like like a, uh, okay. it's like a speed ratio uh, between the two uh, angular velocities and the speed ratio is r2 uh, r2 is 50 cosine theta 2 in here i'm using radian and divided by uh, r3 uh, times cosine theta 3 also in radian so this is the speed ratio uh, omega 3 over omega 2 no okay this is only the speed ratio I didn't finish yet and uh, time is omega 2 okay so 
So, uh, is the omega-3 for you minus 267? Did you find it? Minus 267 radian per second. Uh, okay. Yes. But, yeah, perfect. Okay, good. Good. Uh, now, uh, just, I prefer keeping only... Uh, now uh, I can go ahead and find the uh, V4, which is will be in centimeter per second. Okay. Uh, so uh, what is the equation? It is uh, minus R2 omega 2 sine and plus R2 omega 2 cosine theta 2 tan theta 3. Okay, uh, I'll go step by step. So I will take the first one, minus R2 omega 2 sine theta 2. So it will be minus R2 times omega 2 and sine uh, theta 2. And plus uh, R3 times, uh, I think, should be omega-3 times uh, cosine, no, uh, it's not uh, omega-3, omega-2, it will be omega-2, or simply, uh, as I have already calculated the omega-3, I will use it here. So I will make use this equation, minus R2 omega-2 sine theta-2 minus R3 omega-3 sine theta-3. It's simpler. So it is here minus R3 minus uh, times omega-3 and times sine theta-3 uh, in radian. I'm using only radian for angles. So this is it. And OK. And I have minus 622.4. This is it, I think. This is what you have, 60, 622.40.4. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, okay. I, I will keep this as the solution for... Uh, what we have calculated together. Now again, I, I, I can go ahead and uh, show you that, okay, now, the, for example, with the angle, for different position of the angle, what will be the velocity of, okay, the velocity here for, for the input, I have chosen it as, as constant. Now, it will not for, for omega-3. The velocity for omega-3 will not be constant. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll choose this one. So you see how much omega-3 we changes with different angles. Uh, so it goes between minus 8, almost, minus 8 to plus 8 radian per second. And uh, the, the, the omega-3 will be not constant. So if I will calculate alpha-3, it will not be zero. Here I have chosen that omega-2 constant. So alpha-2, the angular acceleration of 2 will be, uh, will be zero, but alpha-3 will not. And again, V4, it will not also be constant. This is the velocity of the slider in terms of for all positions. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, I will draw this one. Okay, uh, I will. Uh, so I'm going to uh, to take the equation of uh, 
velocity and show you how to deal with, with that to make acceleration. So now we move to the acceleration part. Uh, we need at least to see one example uh, with the slider crank. And uh, I'm going to uh, copy this one and uh, go ahead with this result. OK. Yes, so, uh, OK, I'm going to remove all numerical values uh, that we have used Monday. OK, now, uh, this is it. We have started from uh, the loop closure equation. Uh, we have uh, assigned each one to a link. And uh, we have uh, uh, then obtained these two equations. And uh, we have differentiated the two equations. And later on, we have solved them. Now, uh, in order to go to the acceleration, I will do the same. I, I will not take the last solution. I will go back to the uh, original equation, the two equations for velocity. And I'm going to differentiate them. So this one, I don't need them. I'm going to start from uh, the velocity equation. OK. Now, uh, what I will have, OK, uh, the all of the velocities will be uh, given, so they are known. Oh, these are known. And omega 2, they are all known here. So they move to green. OK, I'm moving them green as they are known. All of them known. Also, what I have, uh, I know from the beginning, which is uh, theta two. It's known. Theta two is known from the beginning. Uh, also, I have, I think, I solved the position problem. So, uh, so R four. And theta uh, three, they are known also. So this is the R four is known. Okay. And also theta three is known. Okay, it is here. Theta three. I will take a copy of it. So so this theta three is known. So uh, this means that okay, here we have already solved the position problem. Uh, the second step means that uh, I already solved uh, the velocity problem. So I move to solve the uh, acceleration problem. Again, as uh, there is mobility equal one, I need one input. So I need uh, one input here. It will be the acceleration. So alpha two, which is... Uh, the first derivative of velocity, uh, omega 2, will be known. But I'm looking for angle now, which is uh, the derivative, the angular acceleration of uh, omega 3. And I will also A4, which is uh, derivative of uh, V four or also they are uh, the second derivative the second derivative of uh, of 
uh, R4 double dot now the second derivative of R. So it will be R4 double dot. Here it's also alpha 3 which is uh, the second derivative of theta 3 and uh, alpha 2 is the first derivative of omega 2 and it is the second derivative of theta 2 so here it is the second derivative of theta 2 okay now uh, this is the input alpha 2 and the output that we need to find are alpha 3 and a 4 okay this is our problem uh, here the position equation here uh, the velocity equation and now I'm going to differentiate them okay I need some more space now uh, okay I, I, I will take one by one So I want first to differentiate this part, okay? I'm going to deal with the second one later. So how I, I, I'm going to differentiate this one? I want to differentiate minus r2 omega 2 sine theta 2 with respect of time. How I'm going to do it. I'm going to recall a little bit. It's not difficult from math, but I'm going to recall it a little bit here. So here, if I want to differentiate with respect of time, then I will use the dots. Uh, here I have kind of multiplication of two functions. I have one function omega 2 that depend on time and the second function which is sine theta 2. So uh, here it's kind of having to differentiate f uh, times a second function g. Okay, uh, so in this case, okay, uh, okay, I will make it uh, no, it's not clear here. I will make it in white. Uh, so, so if I have to differentiate a product, what I do is first differentiate uh, one. So uh, and so I will have to, for example, to differentiate only one at a time. So first, for example, I will differentiate only f and I multiply by g. Then uh, the second, uh, I have f and I will differentiate by uh, g. Okay, uh, this is how we deal with the differentiation of uh, a product. So this is it. Now I have here r2 is a constant, so it's fine. I need first to differentiate uh, omega 2, then uh, I will differentiate in a second time uh, the sign. So first I will differentiate omega 2, it will be alpha 2 here. Uh, okay, it will be alpha 2 sine theta 2, and then, okay, uh, let me remove. Uh, the highlight and in a second time okay it was omega I will differentiate the sign okay now differentiating a sign it is a cosine 
but I need to multiply by uh, omega 2 again so here I have already omega 2 so it will be omega 2 square so here it will be omega 2 square why because differentiating as we have done before differentiating a function with respect to time I need to multiply by by omega always so here it will be this one so this is only so all of these two terms are the only differentiation of this first element without the minus of course now I will do the same for for the second one here so I will take this one and I'm going to uh, differentiate it. It will be more or less the same. Minus. And this one. R3, omega 3, sine theta 3. So first I will differentiate omega 3. It will be alpha 3. And I will keep the sine theta 3. And then I will uh, differentiate the sine which will be omega 3 cosine so I will have to differentiate this one again so now it's not alpha 3 I will keep it I will have 1 omega 3 and here the sine theta 3 will be omega cosine theta 3 and I have here it will be omega 3 square so here we will have omega 3 square and omega 3 is known now why because I already solved it, the position problem now uh, at the right side it's only to differentiate uh, v4 so I will have the acceleration a4 only so it's a little bit simpler then, uh, okay, I need to differentiate this one. So, in the same way, first I need to differentiate the omega. It will be uh, alpha times cosine theta 2. And now I will differentiate uh, the uh, cosine so it will be minus sine so I will switch this one to minus and this one to sine and I need to multiply again by omega 2 and I have already omega 2 it will be in all omega 2 square so here we'll have omega 2 square so this is for the first part now uh, I need to uh, differentiate uh, R3 omega 3 cosine theta 3 so into steps it's equal 0 so at the right side it will be 0 here I will modify it uh, later I will see so here I will differentiate first the omega 3 so it will be alpha 3 and I will differentiate a cosine it will be minus sine and I need to multiply by omega 3 and omega 3 is known I will have omega 3 square but they are in in red okay what is it what is yes what is it okay maybe it's too long for for the equation okay I will do it again I don't know what happens but okay I will rewrite it I will have omega 3 square okay now I have these two equations uh, again they are linear equation and for the slider crank it's it's quite easy solution here 
Okay, so here first uh, we are going to uh, solve for uh, alpha 3 first. Uh, so here to solve for alpha 3, first uh, I move uh, this one to the right. Yeah. Okay, I will move it to the right. And it will be a, okay, a, a plus. No. It will be a plus. Yes. Then uh, I will move this to the right, also it will be a plus, yes, wow, uh, okay, uh, it's, don't know, so I will have, Uh, everything uh, I will move this one so it will be here everything in R2 omega 2 square sine theta 2 now uh, I'm going to remove it okay so here it will be R2 uh, omega 2 square and sine theta 2 and uh, at last I'm going to move uh, this one to the right and it will be minus it will be minus r2 alpha 2 uh, this is it and we can okay Yes. Yes, this is it. So I will have R3 alpha 3 cosine theta 3. It will be equal to R3 omega 3 square sine uh, theta 3 plus R2 uh, omega 2 square sine theta 2 minus uh, R2 alpha 2 cosine theta 2. And after that, I can uh, divide by simply R3 cosine theta 3. Okay, so I will take the right side as numerator of the fraction here. And uh, denominator it will be R3 Okay, now I have alpha 3. Once I have now numerical values, I can calculate alpha 3 and I 4 I can calculate it directly here. So even I don't need to substitute. I can substitute, but uh, I will got a, a quite long expression. It's not useful. So it's better to use only directly this one. Okay.